Hey everyone, Kendall here. So uh, I'm going to show you how to overclock your processor. In this case it's an i7-4770K and I am using a Z87-A ASUS motherboard. Um, a lot of these motherboards now have this feature after you've gotten into the BIOS called Advanced Mode. You can click Advanced and then click OK. Um, as you can tell we are in the BIOS and then there's a feature in here called the AI Tweaker. This is basically allows you to overclock your processor and um, everything that you need to change for we'll use all, only air only. This is not for water cooled but for air only this is really the only section you need to change. There's you know other things you can change but to just quickly overclock your processor this is basically what I'm going to show you here. So um, once you're under your AI Tweaker here you can come down to the core ratio which is by default set to auto you can click enter on it and you're going to want to change that to sync all cores alright once you've synced all the cores the rating here is 40 okay and what you do is you take this 40 here and you multiply that by 100 megahertz because that's our base clock that we're running at for our frequency here so you basically take 40 times 100 gives you 4 gigahertz um, this chip is a 3.5 gigahertz chip uh, on the base and then turbo, what they call turbo mode, basically runs at 3.9. So when you need it, it'll basically kick it up to 3.9. So we're going to say, well, let's set it to 4.0 because we want 4 gigahertz. And then you're going to um, use the down arrow or you can use the mouse and scroll down farther. And uh, what you're going to want to change as well is uh, there's some power saving mode. You're going to want to disable that power savings mode. That basically will make your computer run at that 4 gigahertz all the time. And um, if you want to overclock your processor higher than 4 gigahertz, you know, it might be able to do 4.1 on this stock voltage here um, but if you get much above 4.0 or 4.1 what the chip was designed to do what you want to do is um, it's set to auto right now you want to do manual mode and what you want to do is you're going to want to um, you have the CPU core voltage override and it's set to auto um, I mean offset mode probably is probably the best to be honest um, you can change the numbers in here on how much farther up you want this core voltage. So basically if you want to offset the 1.136 volts by a certain amount you just type in how much more you want to offset it by and then it'll up it um, that amount. Or you can you know manual mode is nice because you can just type in like let's say I want 1.140 oops as an example it'll change that to 1.140 volts okay and then we'll just come up here and we'll change this 40 241 as an example. So that'll give us 4.1 gigahertz. And then all you have to do is come up, click exit. It's going to say, hey, do you want to save the changes and reset it? Yes, let's save it. Okay, we're changing the voltage to now 1.140 from the stock voltage. And we're going to sync all cores um, at that 4.1 gigahertz. We're going to click yes. It's going to reboot. If it successfully works, it's just going to boot right back into the screen it's going to allow you to hit F2 and you can or delete and get into the BIOS which in this case it did it worked just fine and um, now you're at that 4.1 gigahertz and again you can come in advanced mode alright um, it's going to show you 3.5 gigahertz here don't worry about that that's just letting you know what the chip is at it's not letting you know actually what the actual speed is running at um, as you can tell here it's saying turbo mode is 4 gigahertz um, the target is at 3.9 so for whatever reason it didn't save our 4.1 so let's try it again sync all cores there we go change them all to 41 exit save changes and reset there we go it's saying okay it was 40 let's change them all to 41 we're gonna click yes it's gonna reboot again and hopefully yep it took it if it doesn't, what will happen basically is it'll just look like your computer doesn't boot at all. And you'll you'll at first be pretty worried. You'll be like, wow, what's going on? Why is it not booting up? Did I ruin something? No, you'll be totally fine. You can get right back into it. It's not a big deal. As you can tell here, now it's at uh, 4.1 gigahertz. And um, I'll just keep upping this and not up the voltage. Normally you want to up the voltage in order to get these higher clock speeds to make it run stable. 
Um, obviously, the lower voltage you can get with the higher clock speeds, the cooler your CPU is going to run. But what happens is you lose stability when you do that. So um, basically, I'm going to keep trying to push it because I want to make the computer fail in this instance to show you what happens. So again, we're at 42, as you can tell with all these here. We're going to click Exit, Save Changes. It's going to let you know, hey, they were 41. We're going to 42. Yes, we want to save that. And let's see if it boots. And it still continues to boot. Um, so let's try and go up to 4.3. I'm actually kind of impressed. Um, this is an air-only setup. Granted, we're not doing anything crazy with it yet. But um, let's change it to 43. We haven't gone into Windows, we haven't tested it. This is basically just showing you in the BIOS um, if you can boot at that speed. All right, we're gonna save changes and reset again. It's letting you know it's changing it to 43. And it's booted to 43. So um, I'm kind of impressed at that low voltage, to be totally honest, that it's actually booting. These chips, these 4770Ks aren't known I mean, to boot at like 434445 on air um, very well. Normally that, that does not happen. So I change them to 44, we'll save and reset. And again, I'm trying to make this fail. I really want this to fail. So you guys can see what happens. It's continuing to do it. So, so um, yeah, this is a, not a good video in the sense of it's booting just fine on really low core, uh, voltage. Oh, there we go. I can't hit delete, I've been hitting delete and F2. There we go, excellent. So it just looks like, hey, the computer hung, it's froze, what's going on? It's just not working. Okay, so the last successful boot that we got was at 4.2 gigahertz on that voltage. And um, obviously we changed it to 4.3, it looked like it was gonna reboot, but it's just stuck in a hung state. So it's no big deal, just power off, hold down the power button, power off your PC. Okay, so I went ahead and powered it off. On these newer motherboards, when you boot back up, it usually just tells you, hey, it failed to overclock at a certain speed. And this one actually didn't, so it's actually, um, if it fails really badly, the BIOS will actually spit out a message and it'll let you know. But, um, so we'll go back to the AI tweaker. So, okay, sorry, so we were able to boot at 4.3 successfully, 4.4, it didn't really like, it hung. So um, we'll come back to here, click in here, change this to 4.3. No, it's hung again. So um, it may give you an example just like this. And this is exactly what I was shooting for, and what the problems you're gonna run into uh, as you're trying to overclock. And as you can tell, my mouse is completely frozen. I can't do anything. It's not gonna let me do anything. So there's two choices at this point. You can either go back into your AI tweaker and you can reset back to defaults and then start all over which obviously you can tell there was not very many steps I'm gonna reboot this as I'm talking um, or the other thing you can do is just try and bump down that 44 to 4.3 where it last booted successfully and go from there in this case I'm gonna try and beat the window because I know where that uh, 43 is and I'm just gonna try and change it to 43 as quickly as possible and save my changes and reboot um, so advanced mode Yep, it's not liking it. But normally the BIOS um, will kick out a message that says, hey, it failed the last overclock, and it'll basically put it back to the last speeds that it safely ran at. And if that doesn't happen, you can always pull the CMOS battery that's on the motherboard and it'll wipe everything out um, and you can always do that so I'm gonna try and like I said beat it here ah oh, I was so close so as you can tell it does not like that 4.4 on this chip um, I was actually really surprised it got as far as it did um, I'm going to I just don't I didn't prepare and have the case ready and taken off to reset that BIOS on the motherboard here to pull that battery power out so I'm just gonna try and reset it to default as quickly as possible here. Because I feel a lot of you guys are gonna try and do this if this is your first time and you've never done it and you're gonna run into the exact same problems and you're just gonna be like, gosh, why can't I? You can just hit exit and then you can load the optimized defaults. Hit yes. Save changes. Yes. So there you go. I didn't have to pull the case. I didn't have to 
take out the battery to reset the settings in your BIOS, I was able to get to the default settings and basically just set it back to the default. And as you'll tell here, I'll click delete to get back into the BIOS. And I'll go back under the advanced mode and uh, under AI tweaker. And as you can tell, there's the 3.9, which is the default for the turbo mode. And everything here is set to auto again. All right. So if you wanted to overclock, you could go back to sync all cores. In this case, I don't really want to um, change the clock speed really, really high. So in this can uh, case, I'm going, sorry, you have to change this to man manual as well. Oh, wrong one. So this is the front side bus. If you wanted to change that from 100, you could change it to 133, 166. Um, I didn't really want to get into that for this video because what we're interested in is the CPU cl uh, cores here. So we're set to auto. Um, let's click here, manual, sync all cores. Wow, what's going on? Does not let me, there it goes. Wasn't letting me adjust it for some reason. So I'll put it back to, let's do 42, cause um, I know 42 is fine. And then we'll come back and change this. I don't wanna adjust this base frequency. That's what this does right here. Um, when you go to manual, you can change this frequency to like 133. So then obviously your math, if you did 133 times, you know, 42, 43, whatever you're gonna do, it's gonna make it a little different. It also makes your memory run a little faster. Um, a lot of people don't buy high-end memory and that causes a problem. So I would just say so stick to auto on that and just play with your core speed here. So again, we'll um, click exit, we'll save changes and reset. It's gonna let you know, hey, we went from auto to 4.2 gigahertz. Yes, I wanna save that. We'll boot back in. Since you went back to the defaults, that power setting is gonna be enabled, which is basically gonna make it run at a slower clock speed to start out at. And then when you need it, it'll run at the faster speed. So the other thing you're gonna wanna do is once you get it to a speed that you like, is come back down to the power saving mode. Okay, so it did save, it's disabled. Sometimes it re-enables the power saving mode. So you wanna make sure that's obviously disabled. So you're getting that 4.2 gigahertz the whole time. And as you can tell here, we're at 4.2 gigahertz. So I'm pretty comfortable with that on air. It seems like it's uh, booting just fine. So I'm gonna exit here. We'll save our changes and reset. And then uh, we'll let that boot into the operating system. And then I'll show you in the operating system um, what happens next and how to verify that it's booting at 4.2 successfully and that we load test it successfully. All right, guys, so we're in Windows now. And uh, what you're going to want to do is once you're booted up, go down to the task manager here, right click and go to, or sorry, task bar, go to task manager, and then go to performance. And as you can tell, we're running at 4.17 is what Windows is reporting. We set it to 4.2 gigahertz in the BIOS. Sometimes Windows doesn't report accurately. Uh, don't be alarmed by that. It's not a big deal. You are actually running at 4.2 gigahertz. Trust your BIOS. Um, you can get more accurate programs out there if you wanted to download a bunch, but I didn't really want to get into that. I wanted to make this quick, simple, easy for people to overclock your processor and uh, just get right into it. So as you have Task Manager up here, the next program you are going to have to download, or I would strongly recommend downloading, is called Prime95. Uh, this program basically stress tests your processor and all the cores on it. So uh, we'll open that up. We'll go to just stress testing. Um, the first test you're going to want to do is small FFTs. This basically tests the processor more than the RAM. And uh, once you've done the small FFTs, FFTs and it's come back okay, then you can run the test again and do the large FFTs. So we'll just click okay and then immediately it'll go out and it'll start running these tests. And to verify it is, you can click on your processor here and you can tell it's running at 100% CPU utilization now. You know, you can tell right here there was a dip where it was just basically idling. We kicked off that process for Prime 95 and now it's running all cores at 100%. So what you're going to want to do is run this program for about 30 minutes to an hour, verify it doesn't fail. Okay, once you've done that, you can go to test, you can stop your tests, make sure you stop all the workers, and it'll stop the program. Then after you've done that, what you're going to want to do is come back to options up top, go back to torture test, 
and do the large FFTs. This will generate more heat on your processor, and normally, if you're going to have failures, this is where you're going to see them. Um, if you just are not running enough voltage for the overclock that you're doing, the small FT FFTs will catch that initially, um, and the large FFTs usually when you uh, if, you, if your small FFTs are failing, when you do large FFTs, it's immediately going to just stop. It's not going to work. So um, that's basically how you overclock your processor really quickly and easily and uh, don't need a bunch of programs out there to test it. Just Prime95, and it, um, as you can tell, I reran the program here. It's doing large FFTs. It's at 100%. Let this run for another 30 minutes to an hour. Once it, you verify that it, it's not failing, then go back into your BIOS. Uh, on this specific chip, this uh, 4770K, 4.2 on air is about the max you're going to want on stock voltages. You're going to you can go a little bit higher on your voltages to get past that 4.2 to 4.3, 4.4 uh, stably, but I wouldn't recommend that on these chips just because uh, it's going to generate a lot of heat. But um, hopefully you guys learned something, and I appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you.